let's just take a moment and say R.I.P. to the polar tang. And now it is sinking down to the bottom of the ocean. You were beautiful. R.I.P. And you deserve better. Say hi to the Mary for us. Hello everyone, it's Laffy Traffy. Buddy, let me just tell you that you have been through some disrespect. There have been name-calling, disregard of your first mate status, and a laugh at your power and lack of contribution at Wano. But let me tell you, you didn't deserve it. Hi everybody, I'm Laffy Traffy, and this is the chapter where you put some fucking respect on Beppo. This is my little review of One Piece Chapter 1081, Kuzan, 10th Captain of the Blackbeard Pirates. What a reveal, huh? Who cares? Not me! Yeah, Kuzan backstory. It was cool. I mean, it was strange to see Kuzan interacting with the Blackbeard Pirates, and it seemed out of place that, you know, given Kuzan's upbringing with the Marines, we wouldn't really see him allying himself with Blackbeard. And that's been the whole thing this whole time about hearing about Kuzan being with the Blackbeard pirates is that Kuzan might be a double agent, still a member of S.W.O.R.D. but trying to get intel on Blackbeard, which all of that still might be true, I want to point out, but seeing him interact with him and slowly kind of understand this stance that Blackbeard has to live for himself, something Kuzan has never done, again, given his upbringing with the Marines, it was interesting to see a type of character shift within Kuzan. Now, do I think Kuzan is bad? No, because what we've seen in his past and present, he is a good-natured man, and I really don't think he would just be out doing evil for no reason. And he was quite insulted when Blackbeard first initially asked if he wanted to join his crew, even freezing all of the commanders there except for Blackbeard, ready to throw down at any moment, but Blackbeard convinced him. Also, interesting point I brought up in my reaction that Lafitte seemed to think at Blackbeard, a power that I thought maybe was for his devil fruit, sort of a hypnotizing, charming power of whatever he is. But then Kuzan heard it, and if he heard a thought, I feel like someone would have mentioned like, hey Kuzan, how did you hear that by the way? But no one said that, Kuzan just heard Lafitte say that, so it might have just been a whisper. But I just want to point out that it was a weird thing that Lafitte looked like he was thinking at Blackbeard because there were little thought bubbles instead of speech bubbles, but I know whispering kind of has that same deal. I don't really know, but we still don't know Lafitte's power, so it could be anything. Within this flashback of Kuzan, we got a little bit more information about the man marked by flames. Now, the number one theory seems to be Dragon, because the Whirlpool and the Dark Ship kind of seem to relate to his prospective power that Dragon might have to do with controlling the weather and whatnot, so it could be Dragon. And there is reason that Dragon would be keeping a Poneglyph to keep away from the Marines and the Pirates, or even possibly to find the One Piece itself that could be a key to save the world. Probably. But there's also the possibility that the man marked by flames could be someone else that we haven't met. Or even someone crazy like from the past, like rocks. Spooky stuff is going on with a whirlpool and dark ship. So we don't know who the man marked by flames is, but we do know that it's not Kuzan. And it was pretty funny that Kuzan was like, wait, I have it? <laughs> We're like, no, no, it's not you. So it's not Kuzan. We can cross him off the list. But going back to the present, we left off last chapter with Garp doing an astounding attack against Beehive Island, Galaxy Fist! And we pick up right where we left off with then Kuzan showing up and attacking those Marines. Now it's very poetic that Kuzan, a Marine who was kicked out of the organization, who was the best fit to be Fleet Admiral, he is now facing a sect of the Marines, the S.W.O.R.D. members, who are also fighting for justice. But it seems like things have been skewed ever since Kuzan left, for on Kuzan's end, that is. Again, this all might be a ploy that Kuzan is still a double agent, because I really still don't see Kuzan completely turning over to Blackbeard, because Blackbeard is just so evil. <laughs> but alas, the fight that we're about to talk about, there was definitely no punches held there because Garp gripped Kuzan's face 
and slammed it into the ground. Absolutely terrifying. And Kuzan right before that was talking about how he wants to live for himself, he's free, and Garp's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? I thought I taught you better than this. Only... <laughs> Only weaklings lose their way and just slam him into the abyss. <laughs> Kuzan even called out Kobe for being Garp's new favorite and threatening that someone has to die in order for the other to live. So that was like almost kind of hurtful for Kuzan, you know? Like he was Garp's protege, you know, him and Garp go way back, clearly, with the Marines. So to see now Kuzan facing off against Garp it hurt it hurt a bit yeah it did especially when kuzan was slammed into the ground now will garp continue to have the upper hand that is yet to be seen because i've unfortunately been feeling a lot of death flags surrounding garp and this might not end well garp has all of the other commanders of the blackbeard pirates to contend with and this might just be a red herring that garp gets a good hit in on kuzan but then Kuzan is able to get back up and defeat Garp. But Kobe is there. We have a lot of commanders on both sides. So not really sure. But Garp standing in front of his ship there, kind of standing amidst the battle, was very reminiscent and I think very paralleled of Whitebeard when he finally steps off the Moby Dick and confronts the Marines at Marineford. That was a very iconic moment. But we know how that ended, so again, death flags on Garp. But all of that was really just a precursor, like none of that was really that important and life-changing. Unlike the last three pages of this chapter. Law versus Blackbeard. It seems, unfortunately, that Schrodinger's law is no longer safe, as we see the official outcome of this fight against Blackbeard. Law was defeated. <laughs> it hurts to say, but we saw it coming. The polar tang, broken and sinking down to the bottom of the ocean, was possibly one of the most heartbreaking panels that I have seen in recent times. That shit hurt. John Bart, the crew, the ship all sinking down and unable to be saved, not knowing who's even alive. You could definitely feel that crushing defeat in that sense, similar to when Kid was <laughs> annihilated by Shanks. Seeing Kid's ship cut in half, it hurt. The ships in this series are so iconic of the pirate's honor and the crew's familial ties that to see the ship destroyed like really really hurts again referencing Whitebeard in Marineford to see the Moby Dick burning due to a Kainu like that that hurt more than seeing even the Whitebeard crew getting defeated like it was the Moby Dick the center of the Whitebeard family now whatever the fuck kid's ship is called the heart of his crew and now the polar tang the heart of Law's crew that we saw back in Marineford for the first time. Such a unique ship, gone. And it's so sad. We didn't see Penguin or Sachi. Hell, we don't even know if Penguin even is a fishman because we got obviously revealed about the Sachi thing, but is Penguin a fishman? If he is, because he was swimming with Sachi, hopefully maybe the two of them with whoever else might be fishmen, and none of them have devil fruit abilities, so what I'm saying is there's still a chance that the crew could be okay, even after that. Or at least Penguin and Sachi, and John Bart. The core four, you know, and Law. But meanwhile, Beppo. <sighs> Listen. <laughs> Seeing Law and Beppo bloodied and broken in front of Blackbeard was also extremely heartbreaking. And honestly, it hurt more to see Beppo laying there defeated more than it did Law. Law's been there, you know, we've seen it before. But Beppo, he's, no, you don't do that to Beppo. And I think it's also very interesting that Beppo is next to Law, not only for what happens next, but it's also an important detail to show that Beppo was there alongside Law until the very last stand. He was there protecting his captain. And he fucking did it, man. Ugh. 
but damn what I would have given to see that fight. Because, you know, even if there were just a few more exchanged blows, where we left off last time was not where we picked up this time. Clearly Beppo was attacked, he fought, the Polar Tang exploded, John Bart got sent away, Law went back and forth against Blackbeard. I would have loved to see what the turning point was, did he take away the Devil Fruit abilities, did he just quake him really hard? You know, there's a lot of different things that could have happened, and with it being Law, like, I really would have loved, loved to see the entire fight. And Blackbeard straight up threatens to kill Law because, you know, there are a lot of different theories, a lot of uh, different ideas of mine of how Law would be getting out of this fight. Either he might have even been captured if he couldn't escape, or maybe in his scheming ways he could have convinced Blackbeard to let him join him enough until it benefited Law to get away. But no, none of that would have happened. Blackbeard just would have straight up killed Law and taken his devil fruit and done whatever the hell he was gonna do with that. But he didn't, because Peppo. <laughs> I still cannot fathom <laughs> the things that happened in this chapter. You fucking saw it. Beppo ate a rumble ball and went so long. And if there is nothing else that I come out of with this series, with this Beppo addiction, it's this chapter. This chapter makes everything worth it. <laughs> When I saw Chopper pop up on that little speech bubble of a flashback that Beppo was thinking about, I started to lose my shit. Because the idea <laughs> of Beppo becoming this monster was just so unfathomable to me. But here we fucking are. In the endless ideas of Law getting out of this battle, Beppo eating a rumble ball, turning Su Long, smacking away Blackbeard, Jesus Burgess, and Lafitte, and then jumping into the sea with Law and escaping successfully was not one of them. I have to say, it was not one of them. He is him. He is him. Beppo is the goat. Beppo will not be disrespected again, because if you come at him, you're gonna go through me. And also his rumble ball ability, which is pretty freaking cool too. But... You put some respect on this boy's name. I have loved Beppo from the beginning, but we all gotta be honest. You know, Beppo suffered from not being the forefront of all of the arcs, of any of the arcs, really. Um, even in Wano, even in Wano, we wanted to see him Sue Long, and we unfortunately did not get that. But Beppo not going Sue Long in Wano was not terribly disappointing due to what we saw happen with Peckhams. If he's not fully trained, it's probably a bad idea, and we don't really have reason to believe that Beppo was trained in Su Long form due to him being away from Zoe for so long. But this disrespect will come to an end now, because this shows that Beppo will just do anything to protect his captain. Watching Beppo go Su Long on that panel was one of the most out-of-body experiences of my life. I could not believe what I was seeing on levels of, and I'll say it, Gear 5. I don't remember being that blown away by what I was seeing since Gear 5, a year ago. A year of chapters. Fight me. This was it. <laughs> this was what gave me that feeling back. Seeing him fight the Blackbeard Pirates, and save Law. Please let me know what your reactions were to Sulong Beppo, because I could go on forever, but I'll save you your time. It was just beautiful and probably my favorite, favorite scene in a long time. So let me know in the comments what you guys thought, and of course like the video for Sulong Beppo, if for no other reason. Put respect on his name starting now. Like the video. And I just feel compelled to say it, I don't really care, but anyone trying to compare kids defeat with Law's? Mm -mm. Try again. Law was defeated, yes, clearly, but it was not nearly as one-sided as it was kids. I'm purely just concerned now with when we're going to see Law again because as Beppo carries him into the ocean, which that might not be a good idea, Beppo, you should probably let him breathe. <laughs> Devil fruit aside, <laughs> he needs to breathe. I'm sure it won't be anytime soon that we'll see Law and Beppo again, but I hope, 
I hope that they will be able to reconvene with their broken crew and get their shit together, reunite and try and grasp at what's left and continue through the story because unfortunately for Kid, unlike Kid, Law, I think, has a distinct place in the future of the story with the Will of D and Sword. And so to see Law not appear in the rest of the series is just absurd to me. So it's just a matter of when we'll see Law again and in what state he'll be. Will we see Beppo? Will we see Penguin and Sachi? John Bart? Will they have another polar tang? Probably not. Man, just let's just take a moment and say R.I.P. to the Polar Tang. You were the coolest ship, the most unique ship, a submarine. We have not seen submarines anywhere in this series, except for the little shark thing that the Sunny has, but Frankie's a genius, so it's still fair to say that the submarine was such a classic, classic, iconic piece of Law's crew and the series, and now it is sinking down to the bottom of the ocean. You were beautiful, R.I.P., and you deserve better. Say hi to the Mary for us. But that's it for my thoughts on this fantastic chapter. Again, let me know what you think down below, and don't forget to subscribe and, you know, check out uh, my reaction to the chapter. If you haven't seen my reaction, <laughs> you need to because it's crazy. Also, feel free to check out Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch for some streams, other One Piece content, gaming content, whatever your heart desires. And of course, subscribe for Sulong Beppo, because <laughs> this is Beppo signing the fuck out. Bye! Sulong Beppo!